Hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. So I'm just out looking at doing some casual winter camping. Um, I'm driving a vehicle that doesn't have four-wheel drive, so the locations I can get into with this kind of weather are a little limited. Uh, but uh, I still want to get out and kind of do stuff. I'll probably end up camping fairly close to the road, you know, fairly close to the car, that type of thing. Uh, just given that restriction. Uh, I've also brought my own wood with me to kind of save on time of wood processing and that kind of stuff. In the uh, location in the world I'm in, uh, there isn't a lot of uh, daylight hours in the winter time. It's fairly restrictive. So if I want to show you guys other things in my videos, I got to kind of cut out, you know, wood processing and that type of stuff to a certain degree in the winter time, just because I don't have the I don't have the sun hours to get good recordings in, and I'd rather use that time to show you other things. But either way, like I say, uh, I do plan on adding in some bushcraft stuff and you know, set up the camp, get the fire going, all the stuff I normally do in, in a standard video that I produce. And uh, either way, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, this is the same location I was out to uh, a while back where it must have been a month or two ago where there was a creek that was flowing through here now it's snow covered <laughs> but I was planning on kind of camping down in this location People have seen that previous video. Oh, some sort of track has moved across here. Looks like rabbits. But yeah, I was planning on camping here, right in this spot, in one of my previous videos, and there was a stream that was falling through here because of the amount of rain. And now, as you can see, it's snow covered. And that creek that was rushing out from across the way is gone. Beautiful creek though. You can definitely see that the uh, water levels have subsided a fair bit. Yeah, I think that's the intent. So I'll camp somewhere right in this area. I'll probably go up on the higher ground knowing that this gets flooded out into a creek no time ago. I'm just gonna wander up and back up. I think I'm actually gonna camp on slightly higher ground. set up my camp somewhere in this area. Uh, just give me a few trees to tie off to and that kind of stuff. I haven't camped out in here specifically before, but I had a good tree there and a tree there to you know, tie off my tarp and that kind of stuff. This should work. The land in this location is pretty level. Like I say, this is more of a casual kind of camping trip. Normally I don't camp in these spots. Hey there.
Marlin spike hitch. Just a loop. I ran the end through. So I feel kind of lucky today. There was a windstorm that was going on last night. The wind was up to probably 75, 85 k an hour. So I feel kind of lucky I was in the car. It was quite nasty. But today seems to have calmed down a fair bit, so it's always good for me. It's a lot easier to do these kinds of things when the winds aren't just going crazy, right? Either way, let's just get on to it and get this day going. So as you can see, the stick with the Marlin spike hitch just fed through the handles that sit at the top of the bag. It gives it a way to kind of keep your bag up off the ground. In the area I'm in, it's always moist or, you know, it's not quite snow all the time, but it's almost always moisture and you definitely want to kind of keep your stuff dry as best you can. But So you'll see this in a lot of my videos where I do this kind of setup and it's fairly standard for me, quick and easy. You don't need any complex equipment, just a bit of string and whatever's around you for sticks. But uh, yeah, good little trick. I might have spoken too soon, it looks like the wind's starting to pick up again, but we'll see how things work. Uh, the things that can happen when you're out in the bush. So I had my saw strapped to my knife. And you can see I was holding on with rubber strapping it. Somehow it just came free. Don't even have a solid answer for how that came to be, but you can see how easy it is to lose stuff. I thought that was firmly secured onto the side of my uh, knife like that, but apparently it wasn't. So I'll have to look at doing a far more secure lashing of that stuff. But uh, I just feel lucky when you're out in the snow, you know, something like this drops, you could be out a primary tool really quickly. So either way, I'll just kind of throw it in my pocket and carry on with my video. But yeah, you can see if you're not mindful, stuff can go bad quickly.
looks good, it's good enough. coming again. Not the fanciest thing in the world, but gets my camera up on a better angle. <laughs> So just a quick lash with the loop, nothing fancy. And the sticks aren't very good ones when it comes to, you know, preferably you'd want six, eight foot long ones that were as straight as could be, but this is primarily just to get the camera up to eye height so I can get better angles. I'll probably make another one for cooking later. I don't know, I'm debating on what I'm gonna do in that regard and whether I'm gonna set up another one or not. Rustic loop. Another Prusik loop. Just leave those on the line. I started off with a loop and I just wrapped around the tree and then put the line through and then I used a stick to kind of brace this side. So there is no real knots per se on this side, it's just kind of looped and tensioned. But it creates really tight ridge line, fairly simple. And then I use a kind of marlin spike hitch to create
create the loop on this end for the trucker's hitch to give attention. There's your bridge line. Set it up the other way. I want to have it be wider than it is deep. Tarp is 10 by 13. I'm going to switch up some of the guy lines on the tie out points because it's set up the way it was for when I was out with the hammock. So I'll cut scenes, take these guy lines off, and get to switch them up. I'll come back. So I decided to do a little bit of a change of plans. I'm not going to bother with the guy lines, I just set them off to the side. I've got an old beater axe that is on its uh, last legs in my world, and a little hatchet. And I've switched up to a better, a better one. But I'm going to use that to just hammer in a couple spikes instead of using guy lines. I think it'll be easier getting into the snow with these steel spikes. But we'll see. But either way, just didn't bother with the guy lines.
on in the beginning and just get excited and caught up into doing things, right? But as soon as you start feeling the cold coming in on your knees, you'll remember to put them back on again. Forecast today was minus six Celsius, so 15 Fahrenheit, I think it is. It's a little chilly. But even though it's cold out, when you're doing physical work, you, know, you can easily work up a sweat, especially when you're wearing a lot of layers. I had to stop there and stop the scene for a few minutes and just kind of peel off a few layers, cool down, let the you know sweat kind of evaporate off. And you want to stay dry. It's critical when you're out in weather this cold. You might have lots of layers on, but if they get wet, they're useless and you'll freeze. And you can't have that. So, whenever you're out doing this kind of stuff in cold conditions, try to take your time, try not to build up a sweat. You know, I understand that there's lots to be done and you run out of light and all these types of things, but you also don't want to have yourself uh, in a precarious situation because you've gotten moist. Something to keep in mind. I'm going into here even though there's snow on the ground and right underneath this is just gravel and hard stone so quite often you see people use kind of large snow pegs in the terrain I'm in even when it snows there's so much rock in the ground you can't get away with those types of things they just won't go so either way large steel spikes seem to rule this kind of environment Okay, so for those that haven't seen my previous uh, videos where I've had this bivy bag out in the field, I do normally try to switch things up, but for this bushcraft one, I wanted it to have actually got a bushcraft project I want to kind of do later on, so I'm trying to make this a quicker camp. But uh, i give you an idea of what's going on inside this bivy. It all turns into like a bedroll that you roll up, as you saw, sits in the dry bag, but 
there's a thermo rest, rigid rest foam pad I've got on the ground. I've got a uh, uh, SOL emergency mylar bivy, that uh, the escape bivy, and then uh, this is an Aegis Max M2 sleeping bag. I've got uh, a Sea to Summit extreme thermal liner, and then inside the pocket of the bivy, I've just got an inflatable pillow. Kind of lift my head up a bit. This whole sleep system can get me down to about minus 10. So, and like I say, it all just rolls up into a single unit that I just strapped to my backpack. And when I want to save time on setting up my shelters and stuff, the bivy is probably the fastest, most efficient way to go about doing things. I know it doesn't make for the most exciting videos, but like I say, I do plan on doing other things in this video. If I was concerned about keeping this uh, hoop up so it stayed up off my face, the bivy bag itself, I'd tie this off. I didn't find that was a problem the last couple times, so I'm not going to bother tying it off this time. I might if the winds really pick up, but either way, that's uh, like I say, kind of base sleep system set up. It's got a fly net into it, a mosquito netting, where uh, but it's, you can also zip it all up so it's windproof, waterproof, and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's uh, yet breathable. So if you uh, have never tried the world of bivvies, you might want to kind of look into. Uh, trying these out they're fantastic for if you really want to kind of do quick setups and teardowns of your camp like you say throw up a single tarp like this if i wasn't filming it i could have it up in two or three minutes and then have this bivy on the ground if i didn't peg it out and in under five minutes or so you could have this entire camp pretty well set up and you're ready to start making a fire so it's good for speed and that kind of thing right but uh, either way i'm going to push on with the the next elements of the video i just thought i'd show you the sleep system okay well uh, when I first got to this location, I thought this would just be the best place to kind of set up my backpack, but now that I've got my camp set up, I'm thinking I'm probably going to just shift gears and uh, put the backpack hanging on the tree where the ridge line's on here. Just have it closer at hand so I'm not having to stroll around as much. So I'm just going to do that. I won't film it because you guys have already seen how those bags get hung and strapped up and that kind of thing, but either way. So let's just see what the temperature is at this point. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but... Looks like we're sitting at about minus five. So yeah, not quite as cold as I thought it'd be. Maybe minus six. Not as not as cold as uh, I thought it would be. But uh, yeah, there we go. I think the camera should be getting that now. But uh, either way, it's definitely on the chilly side. Well, I thought the winds were calming down a bit, but looks like things are starting to pick back up again. I don't know if the camera's catching this. Uh, I know it feels pretty breezy, that's for sure. It's not quite as intense as it was last night. It was pretty brutal last night, but as you can see, those trees are swaying pretty solid. That's, I'd set the camera down and was down, down by the river. And uh, the wind really started to pick up quite heavy. I just got back up here now, it's starting to calm down again. But I definitely think I could be in for a breezy night. We'll see how things go. <laughs>
So for this uh, bushcraft project, I've got uh, six hanks of rope that are six, eight foot or so a piece. It's not really heavily heavy cordage intensive or anything. But uh, for these uh, lengths of rope, all I've done is put loops on both ends. I tend to do that a fair bit to any lengths of cordage that I cut. Just simple loops. Down to the one tree. And take the other hank, hook it onto the other tree. Quick release isn't. It's never easy. So at about the same height on another tree that's not too far away. Hook on this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of wood and using some Marlin spike hitches, I'm just going to strap it up. Marlin spike hitch, you kind of loop the rope over itself and then pull it through. And all I'm going to do is take one end of the piece of wood, try not to block the camera too much, but take one end of the piece of wood and we're going to feed that through. Just let that set. we come over and do the exact same process on this side. Oh, I need to. the exact same thing. I'll do my Marlin spike hitch. Set my wood on. Allows me to now just kind of have a cross beam to support my table that I plan on building here. So this is where I'm going to take the other four hanks of rope that I have. And all I'm going to do with these ones now is hook them on, pull them through. I'll cut back when I have all four on. Like I say, super simple. Just take the loop, put it over, pull the other end through. pieces of cordage that are just hanging off that support now. Okay, so for this step, I've harvested just four pieces of wood, and, uh, two of equal length, another two of equal length. And, uh, you know, they could all be the same length, but you know, within reason, arm spans length. So what I've done with these four, in fact, I'll just set this so what I've done here is the two pieces of rope that were on the right side, I want to swing that way, and the two that were on the left side, I'm going to swing this way, just to help kind of add the stability as I build this. So now the thinking really here is I'm going to do the same Marlin spike hitches that I did to hook that main piece of wood on. So I'm going to turn around and say, set my Marlin spike hitch attach my piece of wood. I might even have to come down further. So I set my Marlin spike hitch. Just one kind of on the end of that piece of wood. I'm going to do the same for the other side. Two pieces of cordage. 
do the same kind of thing again. You might have to adjust your Marlin spike hitches as you go to make sure everything's kind of level, if you will. That's not a difficult task to do. Though. So now I can see that, oh, it's not all square. I'm going to have to lower that spike hitch. Really a fairly easy thing to do once you get used to playing with this knot. So I'm going to give yourself a little slack. And pull. And you can quickly adjust it. Be more where you need to be. So now the thinking really is the other two pieces of wood that you have. So really you're just trying to build this frame out. So you're going to turn around and create yet another Marlin spike hitch right below where you've attached the first. Sit in your piece of wood. And I'm going to do the same on this one to kind of force the spread if you will. You'll see what I mean in a second. This is all done with a single knot, right? So, I've got that one set on. I know it looks like a jumble pile mess. It'll all start to come together here in a moment. Essentially what you start to do is you start to just form kind of your squared surface if you will. And the thinking really is we're going to brace a piece that goes across and a piece that goes across underneath and it's going to create a stable structure. So I've got to go harvest a couple more pieces of wood. I'll be right back. Okay, so I know I kind of did it off camera but what I've done is really just attach two diagonal branches now to kind of force everything to box out if you will and now this creates you know you have to adjust your marlin spike hitches so that everything's kind of level this end still has to come up a little you can see it's low so I'll adjust that and then the thinking really is you just start laying your wood across to make a tabled surface if you will so let me adjust this corner and i'll see if i can get some wood to kind of lay across the top of it and we'll have a floating table bushcraft style so as you can see just kind of start adding branches on that you know is going to be good enough to come across the entire length of it i've already got a few in there that are too shy but either way that's so and then the thinking really is just fill it up 
just pack the entire surface up, potentially throw some boughs on top if you want. You could uh, step this whole structure up and build it to where it's a raised bed just floating. And that's, uh, you know, the, the paracord, if you got true 550 paracord, should be strong enough to hold the entire structure and support you in the way you need to. But either way, I'll just kind of keep pushing along and finish this off so you can see the example. So you can see, I've now added on a pile more branches. Now it's starting to take shape more like a freestanding table. So the thinking really is if you wanted to kind of soften it, you can see I, I could do some more fine tune adjustments. The back end seems to be still a little low, but normally if I was to do this for say a longer term base camp shelter kind of thing, I would spend far more time cutting all this wood to make it nice and everything. I've put this together in probably half an hour, 45 minutes from the point we started. It might seem a little longer on the camera because I keep stopping in that, but it really hasn't taken me that long to throw this together. So the thinking really is though, if I want to kind of soften it off, I'm going to, I found deadfall. I'm not using any live trees at this point in time. I really try to not do that when I'm out here as much as possible. If I need something green, I'll take it, but I don't find I need green stuff very often. So well, one way or the other, the winter storms that have been going through have been fierce. So I'm going to probably take some of these uh, boughs off and throw those on top. All right. Well, the floating table has been completed. So I managed to find uh, some cedar boughs and just threw them on top. They're good because they kind of lay flat, if you will. But as you can see, a water bottle full of water sitting on there. You know, toque and mitts and that kind of stuff. But needless to say, it creates an area where you can kind of set stuff down on, if you will, right? So the cordage that went into this, like I say, was fairly minimal. I've, I took six of these strips that were six or eight foot a piece. So that's what, 25, 30 foot of rope, somewhere in around there. I mean, I just do it by kind of arm's length measurements. I'm not out there with a measuring tape or anything, but and then I probably could have used a slightly thicker stick when it comes to the suspension stick. It seems to be bowing a little, but you know, this whole thing, when you stop and kind of contemplate what's what's been done here, you could scale this whole thing up where that could easily become a seat or a bed, you know, furniture, if you will. Of, and when it comes to how I've strung this up between the two trees, that could have easily just been strung up on a ridge line. I just wanted to show the strength of using these marlin spike hitches to actually sustain a load. That literally, other than the lark's head knots that I used, you know, to to kind of lash the uh, cordage to the wood. Everything else is a single knot. It's the uh, marlin spike hitch, which like I say, is a very elementary knot. You fold it over, grab, and then you set your object through that opening. You know, there's nothing to it really. If it's a very, very simple knot, but uh, it allows you to build things like this fairly rapidly with very little cordage. So I'm gonna stop at this point in time and kind of take a break and have myself uh, maybe a bit of food or something. That's, uh, but yeah, this was the main reason why I wanted to come out. I kind of had this uh, buzzing around in the back of my head of a project to do. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed seeing this come together. There's still more to the video that I plan on doing. I'm gonna get a fire going and get food and all that business. But uh, at this point in time, this was the main thing I wanted to accomplish. So I'll just kind of pause and take a break. I'll cut to another scene. And we'll be right back in to do another things. Stop for a little lunch. I'm just gonna do off the butane at this point in time. Chicken and Mr. Noodles, nothing fancy.
Okay, so just to give you a little status update, I uh, had both the batteries of the GoPro and die on me, but I have a USB lighting system that I'm using to kind of charge up my battery stack. I've got one battery, this is my crappier of the batteries I'm running on as we speak. Uh, it, uh, I've been really just processing wood since since I've been gone. So, grabbed a pile of twigs. I had to sacrifice the uh, bushcraft table that we so diligently made earlier today. And that was uh, hung up over there. And I tore that all down. I wanted my rope back. I don't normally like leaving things in the woods. Try to leave it the same way I found it pretty well. But uh, I also wanted all the larger twigs that I had used in that project just for burn material. I did find this piece of wood that uh, came from a fire pit that was sitting over there. But I'm going to use that to kind of be a base to get my fire going to just get it up off the ground. So the thinking really is uh, that, yeah, I'm just going to get my fire going in the near future here. And uh, just start to chill and get ready for the evening to come. Winds are blowing the opposite direction all day. And it always the way.
Oh, this wood's so wet. Man, this could be complicated. I think even the small stuff doesn't want to go. Oh shit. These get the small twigs burning even. You can hear the moisture in there. I'm really not liking that. Those twigs just don't seem to want to burn. I'll just keep trying to dry it out. Even the smallest of twigs, I can see them in there, just tasting and bobbing. Huh. An entire bottle of that. Just trying to get some twigs going. That's not good. Well, I know this stuff should be all seasoned. Hopefully this will take a flame. I'm really banking on it. Either that or it's way more time in the bivy bag. Something to catch. Yeah. You can see the white and the smoke. Oh, I think this is one of the tougher fires to get going. never use that kind of volume of fuel or anything. I'm just impatient too. I don't want to piss around with the fire this time. I just want it to be, I can say it's what, minus six or minus seven. I'm supposed to get down to minus nine, I think, tonight. So definitely don't want to be playing the, playing the, oh yeah, everything feels so. Trying to dry some of this shit out. I'll just leave it be and see if it burns now for a few. I guess I'll just leave it on, really. You guys probably just want to see if this even goes or what. <laughs> Looks like there's a bit of hope on the inside. Man, that stuff is wet, though. I thought it'd be dry, so it's, you know, sitting up off the snow where it was up high enough, but... The moisture out here, when it's not snowing, I guess just saturates everything so much, nothing ever dries up. Not this time of year, anyways. Okay, I'm not even 100% that uh, this wood's going to catch. Those twigs still don't look like they want to go. starting to grow on his eyes. That means some of the kindling is starting to take, right? Paper's always good. Wow. Look how white the... Whew. Let's get some air moving through there. I can see 
and some of these main bigger logs are starting to take a flame a bit. That helps. That's what you want to see. Man, oh man. Yeah, look how all that small twigs just they sit un, uncooked right and it'll probably take half an hour 20 minutes for them to dry out enough to actually get into the fire hopefully the stuff i bought and brought and uh hopefully that stuff is dry enough it'll hold and even though i didn't have any kindling of that i guess i should just grab the axe and maybe cut up some smaller pieces out of that eh? finally external warmth man it's ever cold out here. Feels nice to feel some heat that's not just me generated. Whew. Minus six. I say, I think it's supposed to get down to minus nine. So. Oh. Don't even want to step away from the fire ever again. <laughs> bigger sticks so there's enough heat in the fire now I'm starting to be able to add them on. It's always good. Get rid of all the deadfall in these areas. Makes it less risky in the summertime when campers are out here doing stuff and being irresponsible and blah blah blah. Right? It's good to just get rid of all the stuff early on safely and you know for someone that knows what we're doing more or less. Oh, just feel the warmth on your butt. Oh, you know it. About time. Man, does it ever get cold. Now, this is the best feeling when you get a fire going when you're out, <laughs> when you're out in cold like this. The, the breeze isn't going now. It's nice and calm. Hopefully it stays that way. But uh, when it gets breezy and the temperature gets down... Man, does your butt ever get cold? It's as simple as that. I've been waiting for this point all day long, but I did want to do the bushcraft stuff, so, you know, you got to put everything into the video you can to make it interesting. You know, I'm going to put on a good show, if you will.
like to organize my wood to a smaller wood and work yourself up to the larger wood. The coals need to build up in the fire. So, you know, if you start with the small ones as fuel, kind of build that base of heat. And that way when you get up to the larger wood, you've already got the heat there. When you add the larger logs, they'll actually take and go. If you try to throw them on too early in a fire's life cycle, you can end up smothering the fire out because there just isn't enough heat and oxygen to burn that much fuel at one time. You have to have things in ratio of, of you know, fuel, heat, and oxygen. And if you have too much of one or too much of the other when you're trying to make these things, the fire just won't take. So I'll start with the smaller ones and work your way up in the wood. So there seems to be some debate amongst uh, some of my YouTube subscribers when it comes to how I'm producing the videos. From some people I hear they like the fact that I don't say much and just kind of get on with it. And from uh, others in the community they wish I was describing and explaining out the things I'm doing in a little more detail. So kind of throw it out there to you guys if you're watching. You know you made it this far in the video. Do you think I should be verbalizing more or less or... You know, how do you guys think I should approach it? I'm quite comfortable going through a day without saying a word and just knowing that the camera's catching it. But I can also be chatty too and describe everything I'm doing the best I can. It's up to you. Whatever you guys like. One way or the other, I just enjoy being out here, right? I mean, there's probably not another camper 30 miles around me. <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, to know that you're out and doing things that other people aren't brave enough to get out and do. <laughs> it's really that simple. Hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So thanks for joining me on another bushcraft adventure. As you can see, I'm out in winter conditions. Decided to go with a bivy bag and a tarp this time. Quick and easy setup. Really wanted to do the bushcraft table more than anything. I hope uh, you guys didn't skip through those parts. They're good ones, I think. But uh, if you enjoy this type of content, like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Cheers.